Welcome everyone to another episode of Gong Fu Yu. We're still in section one of four, the foundations of teaware. And today's topic is the complete Gong Fu experience. Before we get into it, I just want to talk about a few things. If you'd like new teapots, you can check out our website as well as any other cool teaware related merch. Second, make sure you hang around till the end of the video because we're going to go into the four treasures that make up a Chinese tea house that I didn't know about before I actually started researching this topic. Please, 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 friends, take this video with a grain of salt. The purpose of this video is not to have you go out and buy all of this teaware. In fact, I wouldn't recommend that you do that. I recommend that as you see fit, as you see a hole and a need that maybe you consider purchasing something. But honestly, most of the time I brew with a very simple setup, not using most of the things mentioned in this video. This video is just meant to be an instructional guide on everything you could have if you're brewing Gong Fu style. Which we're contrasting to obviously our traditional Western style of tea. So that's the main focus for this video. So we're gonna start and look at the dynasties and go through the dynastic progression to see how we get the teaware that we have today very quickly and then we'll get into each of the pieces of teaware. Starting in the Tang Dynasty with Liu Yu writing the classic of tea. If you look in his book, he talks about 26 pieces of teaware or epiquage as he says in the book. These are very different than what we use today. And the reason is tea was made very differently. When it was boiled, there was a lot more processing that actually had to go in to the process of just steeping the tea. And it wasn't steeped, right? It was boiled at that time. Then as we fast forward into the Song Dynasty with powdered tea, we start to see the use of a whisk and other tea tools that again, have transitioned into what is now modern day Japanese style tea, right? Japanese style powdered tea. But again, using very different equipment than what what we're talking about when we're referring to Gong Fu tea. Once we get to the Ming Dynasty, we see names that we're familiar with, Jing De Zhen, Yi Xing, and different areas and places that we know. And the modern tools that we use for teaware started all the way back then in the Ming Dynasty over 500 years ago. So I've broken each of these types of teaware down into separate sections, and I did include one thing that isn't teaware just because it is fundamental for that section. So the first we're going to talk about brewing. And the first thing we have within brewing is the cha ye. What is cha ye? Well, cha ye is tea leaf. So obviously, without leaves of tea, you can't really get started. You can't really do anything. The whole process of everything else we talk about doesn't matter without the tea leaf. Now, there are plenty out there who would say you should never drink bag tea, you should never use any blends, you should never... Whatever tea you want to use and put in your teaware that you find enjoyable, you can use. Now you don't need my permission for that, but I just want you to just take that in. You can use whatever you want. I usually use loose leaf Chinese tea, but I could use anything. And you can too. All right, with that serious note out of the way, let's talk about the next thing you need. So you have your zhu shui qi or dian shui hu. Now, what are these? Well, we're talking about your kettle or an electric kettle, okay? So this is gonna be the second thing you need. And I feel like it's one of the most foundational ones that new tea drinkers forget about, especially when they're traveling and when you're on the run. And I did too, when I first started drinking tea, I didn't really think about the fact that I need a way to heat the water. Now, when I lived in China, it didn't really matter because there were water kettles everywhere. Anywhere you went, they had electric kettles. But in the West, well, we don't really use them as much. They're becoming more popular, but you still don't find them in every household. So if you want to do tea with your friends and be able to just set up when you're going places, you're going to need to make sure you have a kettle. There are all sorts of kettles. And I think the most prized among all tea drinkers is going to be the charcoal heated clay pot. And it kind of, it's a little bit of a flex. If you have a charcoal heated um, kettle, it's, it's pretty cool, not gonna lie, but definitely not necessary. You can always go with an electric kettle. You do wanna be careful of the coils because they, you know, some of them are better than others in terms of the brands that make them, but an electric kettle where you can control the temperature is really nice, especially when you're looking at tea brewing recommendations that a lot of tea companies give. You can't necessarily get that temperature control if you're using a charcoal based kettle. 
Now, on the flip side, electric kettles, they only heat for a very, very, very short amount of time. And that comes from the way that it's heated. So if you are using a proper clay pot as your kettle, um, and you're using some sort of charcoal heating or even an electric heating element, because the actual kettle and pot itself will heat up, you will maintain a higher heat with that. So if you don't wanna have to keep tapping and tapping and tapping to get your tea back up to temperature and keep it closer to that higher temperature, that may be the best option for you. But again, if you wanna go simple, you can always just get one of the collapsible silicone ones. No, they're not the highest quality, but they're convenient, easy to use, and help you get brewing gongfu style. Now, if you've been brewing tea for any amount of time gongfu style, you probably have heard of these. So we have the cha hu and the gai wan. Now, each of these respectively are different. So when we're talking about the cha hu, this is the Chinese traditional style teapot, right? And when we're talking about the gai wan, we're talking about this little guy right here with a nice lid on top, the gai, the gai zi. Now, yes, they're two different things, but they functionally serve the same role. They're both brewing vessels and loosely defined pots. So you'll need one or the other, not necessarily both, but if you have both, they have different applications. The gai wan typically is gonna be made out of porcelain or a glazed type of stoneware. So why does that matter? Well, it keeps the tea neutral. So if you wanna just taste what does the tea taste like by itself, your gai wan is gonna be the best thing for that. If you want to taste the change in the minerality, the way that heat concentration and dissipation affects the tea, and you want to check out real, real fine artistry, you want to check out a teapot. There's so much that goes into making these. Not that the gaiwan isn't great, because it is, and there's artistry in it, but the shape and every single component of a teapot plays such a big effect on how it interacts with the tea, including the minerality. Oh, I, I could just, I could go on forever about teapots, um, but I have to keep going. Next, we have the cha chuan, or the tea boat. Now, when we talk about the tea boat and later when we talk about the tea tray, we need to talk about the difference between a dry and a wet setup. So what am I talking about when I say a dry and a wet setup? Well, basically, in a wet setup, with, if you have a stoneware teapot, you're pouring water over the top of it. And what this does is it helps to heat up the teapot, get it primed and ready for the tea that you're going to be drinking. Now, wet setups typically spill, right? It causes a little bit of a mess. So if you don't have a tea boat or a tea tray, it will go everywhere. So I typically don't use a wet setup. I typically use a dry setup, just with a towel underneath my teaware. But this is what the cha chuan is for. So the cha chuan or the tea boat goes underneath your pot so you can pour over the top of it and it creates a little moat around the outside of the pot. So it's pretty cool. Keeps everything insulated in a nice small little area. In addition to the singular item cha chuan, there's also longer ones that you know are the size of a small tea tray. And then finally, I would say the most distinguished and interesting of those styles is the chao zhou style tea boat which arguably could also be called a tea tray. But it's typically about 12 inches around, it's a circle, and so you can brew all of your tea over the top of it. One reason that they do this in Chaozhou is because of the methodology, the way that they brew tea. So in other regions, they use, and we'll talk about this later, the gong dao bei, or the pour cup. In Chaozhou, they don't use these. They'll pour from the gaiwan, directly into the teacups. And what they'll do as they're going around is they'll pour and then they'll pour back around, let's say two, three, four cups. And so when they do this, well, there's gonna be some tea that spills. And so that cha chuan underneath becomes a great tool for not only tea water, but tea leaves in between steeps. You can lift up the lid, drop some tea leaves in the bottom, and then keep going. So it's very practical for brewing chaozhou style. Next, we have the cha lo which is the tea strainer. Now, we very, very rarely use a tea strainer. I very rarely use a tea strainer. I think that the pour cup functions well enough as a strainer, and so I don't normally use it, but I think it's less intimidating for new tea drinkers, especially when you're brewing loose leaf. And the reason that the strainer is useful, you can drop it right on top, and regardless of the size of the tea leaves, you don't have to worry about it spilling into your pour cup or your tea cups, whereas, if you're not using the strainer, if you're using a big leaf tea, it's pretty easy. But if you're using a smaller leaf tea, like the Zhengshan Shaozhong, for example, right, the Lapsong Shouchong, those tiny little pieces may slip through and you may have more of them and you need to adjust the gaiwan lid positioning. And as a new tea drinker, well, you don't wanna, 
you don't want to be worrying about it, right? And so the tea strainer, the cha lo, is a great tool for that purpose. And it helps out with that fear when you're first starting using a gai wan. Next, we have the most quintessential, the most important piece of teaware that I recommend every tea lover has in their arsenal that I feel like gets forgotten about a lot because it may not be glamorous, but it is the gong dao bei. Now, this is a decanter, okay? So you pour from the gaiwan or the teapot into the gong dao bei, into the pour cup. And this pour cup well, it does so many things. So the first thing that it does is it helps you to make sure that your steeps are even. Because you're using a high amount of tea concentration, because you're using a low amount of water, and it's blisteringly hot, well, it's very, very easy to oversteep your tea, which creates an astringency and you won't like it. And, and so that's the first thing it does. The second thing it does is allows you to pour, well, evenly in between different cups and not have to pour Chaozhou style where you're spilling in between. The third thing that it does is it really helps you to examine and look at the liqueur, especially if it's glass, right? If it's glass, it's very easy to see the color of the tea in this. And so that's really good for when you're doing tastings, which is the final thing that I'll say, the final use for the Gong Dao Bei, the pour cup, and that is doing vertical or horizontal tastings. A horizontal tasting is drinking several different types of teas next to each other. Now this could be different types of oolongs, different types of white teas, or it could be a mix of different types of tea as well. So one white, one puar, one oolong. Vertical tastings, on the other hand, are tasting over time. So having the same tea made by the same producer often over several different years to taste the progression. What does it taste like to go from a 2013 to a 2018? to a tea that was just brewed this year. Finally, the last tool that we need for brewing tea is the cha zhen or the cha tong. This is the tea pick or tea knife respectively. Now, this is only needed if you have cakes of tea and only if you have big enough cakes that can't be broken that don't come in little single size circles. So this is most likely the least likely tool that you'll need in the beginning of starting your tea journey. But as you progress on and you start aging teas, whether white teas or puars, you're definitely going to want to have a tea knife around at some point. There's typically two different types. There's one that has a, a very, very fine needle that's really thin. And then there's one that's flatter and is, it looks more like a knife um, or, or a letter opener, if you will. Next, we have serving implements or serving teaware tools. Now, for serving, there's only a couple that we use, and there's actually three that all functionally are the same thing in English, but they have slightly different meanings and slightly different uses in Chinese. The first is the cha che, which is the tea scoop, but broadly defined, it's the spoon version. So oftentimes these will be made out of bamboo, and its function is to weigh out or put your tea in and move it from the bag or wherever you're taking it from into the brewing vessel. The second is again another tea scoop, it's the cha zi. This is often wooden, it's also carved, sometimes it's made from live edge wood, sometimes it's very refined, a lot of times again if it's coming from China it may be made out of bamboo. And the third and final type of tea scoop is the cha he, which is typically going to be ceramic. These ones often are circular in their shape with a spout at the end so you can very easily pour them into your gaiwan, they're shaped specifically for that. The first two aren't necessarily shaped at the end and they just have a wide opening that you use to pour with. Again, these are all different variations of the tea scoop. And again, the first one, the reason I didn't wanna say it was a teaspoon is because, well, there's, there's already a teaspoon in English and we don't wanna get confused because it has nothing to do with size or volume like a teaspoon does. It's just a receptacle for putting tea into your brewing vessel. Next, we have the cha jia which is tea tongs. Now these are useful in a ton of situations. So the first situation where you'd use your tea tongs is to actually move tea, to scoop tea from the bag into one of your respective tea scoops. The second use is for when you're rinsing or cleaning your teas. So this is often used again in the Chaozhou style where you have that one circular piece of teaware and you fill it with water and then you can actually dip the cups in and rinse them out while holding the tongs so you don't burn yourself. And in a ceremony, 
ceremonial style in Chinese tea culture, this is when you'll actually use the tea tongs to hand people their teacups. It's very, very formal, not done casually. But again, this is one of the aspects of brewing tea gongfu style. Finally, we have, well, the most important part of serving, the cha bei and the cha wan. Now, each of these respectively are a tea cup and a tea bowl. What's the difference? Well, broadly defined, a tea cup is gonna be smaller. Typically, you may get a set of these where they're 50 to 80 milliliters, sometimes even as small as 20 or 30 milliliters, very, very small. Whereas the cha wan is typically going to be bigger, 100 milliliters, sometimes even more. And also within the tea bowl variant, we also have the zhu ren bei, which is the master's cup or the specialty cup. And this is a one-of-a-kind piece for an individual. So the cha wan, you can still have a set of them, but with the ju ren bei, this might be a cup that you actually bring with you when you go to your friend's house. And it's a very specific or special cup that you can leave at a tea house in China, you can bring with you when you're going to your friend's house in the West. And it's just a very special piece of teaware and special cup for the user. All right, the final category of teaware that we have for today is the presentation teaware. Again, there's only three pieces, so not a ton that we need in this section, but definitely worth noting. So the first that we have is the cha tong, and this is your tea jar, right? So this is a storage container that you use for tea. Now, if you wanna get really fancy, you can get them from the coolest places in the teaware world, like Yixing, Jing De Zhen, and Jian Shui. But a lot of times they're more practical to have metal ones that you can get online as well. So either way, however you wanna store your tea, these cha tongs are a good addition to your teaware collection. And the last two pieces of teaware, well, they're probably some of my favorites. So we have the cha pan, which is the tea tray. Now in China, these are magnificent. And we'll talk about a sub-variant of this when we get to the four treasures of a tea house. But basically a tea tray can range from, you know, a small, 10 to 12 inch tray to the full size of you know a table, maybe four feet long, or fully represented the table itself. But I don't wanna get ahead of myself. The next thing that we have is the cha jin, which is the tea towel. To me, again, this is another essential piece that you want to have in your teaware collection because the tea towel can either be used to clean up after spilling or making a mess, or it can be used as your tea tray if you don't have a tea tray. And so you can bring it for a mobile setup on the go, which to me just makes sense. All right, so now that we went through all of the different types of teaware, again, I wanna talk about those four treasures that you see in all tea houses. And there's a really, really cool Chinese saying that illustrates this thought. And it goes like this, Han zu cha zhu, Cha shi si bao, chue yi bu ke. Super, super cool. And here's what it means. In Han teaware, meaning Han people, at the tea house, there are four treasures. You cannot be short even one of them. Really, really cool saying to start off these last four pieces of things that are required and just make sense in a tea house. The cha shi si bao the four treasures of a tea house. The first one, well, it's a very fancy way of saying something that we as Gong Fu tea drinkers probably already know. And this is the Meng Chuan Chong Guan. What is that referring to? Well, it's referring to having a clay teapot, specifically a purple clay teapot, but I don't think it needs to be limited to purple clay because there's tons of great red clay and other clays. But it's starting with this foundational belief that you need to have a purple or just a clay teapot in the tea house. The second foundational treasure piece is the Roshan O. Now, the Roshan O is basically just a small porcelain tasting cup. When I was reading, it was described as basically being half of a ping pong ball. Um, and, and that's really what it is, right? A sampling cup that's in porcelain so you can taste it in its purest, simplest form with just the tea, no heat retention, no heat, nothing. Just the tea just the porcelain. Third, we have the Yu Shu Wei. What is this? It is a clay charcoal furnace. Again, these are really, really popular in Chaozhou. I have not seen them too many other places, but basically what it is is it has a little spot for charcoal or fire on the bottom, and then it's just a clay receptacle going up and you put the pot on top of these. Finally, we have the Chaoshan Hong Lu. This is also known as a Cha Hai, 
And what this is, is a massive, massive tea tray. You see these in Yixing, you see these in big tea houses, and sometimes it's the full table itself. It's half a tree cut in half, polished over, looking absolutely gorgeous. And really there's nothing like it. I've never seen anything like it in the West. It's very uncommon, but this is the kind of biggest, highest level flex that you can have in a tea house is having one of these. That's the end of this video, friends. Again, I am Dart from Fire and Earth Teaware, and if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really makes a huge difference in us being able to produce more teaware-related content. That is all I have for you today. Enjoy and steep well, werewolves.